Welcome back. In this lesson, I'm briefly going to talk about and provide you a high-level Hibernate architecture. So within the application and the database, we have our Hibernate environment, right? And what Hibernate does is simply takes those Java objects or objects within the OOP concepts or object-oriented programming concept. We have objects, right? So it takes those objects and stores them into a database and it uses it by a couple of different files right so we'll take a look at once we actually get into the application development within hibernate that we will first configure the config.hibernate.xml file and set some properties use some jar files and so on but just for now understand that it just takes the java objects and places it into the database and the persistent objects is where the concept of Java persistence API comes into play. So let's explore what this is. So what is the JPA? The Java persistence API is simply a collection of classes and methods to persistently store the vast amounts of data into a database. So it's the bridge right between the objects and the database itself. Typically, Java developers, we use lots of code or use a proprietary framework to interact with the database such as JDBC or other drivers. Whereas using JPA, the burden of interaction with the database is reduced significantly. And the way it manages this, it forms a bridge between object models, which is our main program, right? The objects within our program and relational models which is the database program so such as a one-to-one -one relationship one-to-many or many-to-many -many. so the JPA bridges this gap the Java persistence API is the Java standard for mapping Java objects to relational databases so that's what you need to remember about JPA where to use JPA why do we use it to reduce the burden of writing codes for relational object management. So JPA would do it for you automatically, right? So a programmer follows the JPA provider framework, which allows easy interaction with the database instance. Here the required framework is taken over by the JPA. So you don't have to write the actual code for connecting to the database. Now you're simply using the JPA. So all you do is import a module within your Java program. It says import java.persistence right and then it will do the work for you jp is an open source api therefore various enterprise vendors such as oracle red hat eclipse provide new products by adding the jpa persistence flavor in them some of these products include hibernate eclipse link top link spring data and so on and of course hibernate is what we're concerned about in this course the class level JP architecture some new words we talked about these words we understand them from our previous lesson but just one more time the entity manager factory is a factory class of entity manager right so or the at entity sign within the hibernate environment it creates and manages multiple entity manager instances the entity manager however is an interface it manages the persistence operations on objects so it works like factory for query instance, for example. Entities are the persistence objects. They store records in the database. And the entity transaction defines the type of relationship with the entity manager. Primarily, it has a one-to-one -one relationship with the entity manager. The persistence class, they simply contain static methods to obtain the entity manager factory instance. And once the query is implemented to obtain the relational objects to see what's in your database that would meet the criteria so just give you an idea of the class level jpa architecture here's a visual representation lastly i just want to show you how it looks like right so it's, sometimes it's easier to actually see so the jpa essentially is the bridge right between the database and it uses entity manager factory transaction query persistence and entity manager 
and it uses the Java X dot persistence module and we'll take a look at once we get into the Java code development how we use and import or how we integrate the JPA within hibernate so practice with this understand learn more about JPA kind of know what that means it's a buzzword so you need to ought to know exactly what JPA means and how it functions how it works and why do we use it right so it's a bridge so hope this helps practice and let's move to the next lesson